All right, so we're back and we're going to be talking about the nervous system in this section. All right, so our nervous system, the term refers to all of the, um, you know, structures that communicate within our body using electricity pre pre predominantly and then chemicals between them. So we've got the nervous system and it's broken down into two parts, the peripheral and the central nervous system. The central nervous system is pretty simple. It's, um, it's the green part here on the guy on the right or the person on the right. Um, it's green. So all that is marked green there is the brain and the spinal cord. That's it. That's the central nervous system. It's kind of easy to remember that the, that the spinal cord is actually part of the brain or part of the central nervous system when you realize that the, the spinal cord is made up of axons and dendrites that are extending down from the brain and up to the brain to communicate back and forth between the central nervous system and the peripheral nerv nervous system. So the central nervous system is all this one unit that then needs to communicate with the peripheral nervous system. Now, the peripheral nervous system is a little bit more complex. Um, it is made up of everything that's red on the person on the left, and um, it's made up of two divisions. The somatic nervous system is the part that you have voluntary control over. So when you walk or you chew gum or you talk and things like that, you're, you're doing it on purpose and you've got control over it. So those are called somatic. Soma means body. So it's like your you know, control over your bodily muscles, your bodily movements. Um, it actually includes not just control, by the way. It also collects information from the body. So... Um, in our somatic nervous system, we actually have two kinds of neurons. The kind of neuron that collects information from our body. Here we have a um, person doing something that probably a lot of us have done just to see, you know, like, how long can I do it? You know, hold your finger over a candle. Always fun. Um, so this person is holding a, their finger over a candle. And the heat from the candle is being collected by sensory neurons. Sensory neurons collect information from the body. In this case, uh, the finger, and it's collecting information about heat. There are different kinds of sensory neurons. There are heat. There's, um, there's like, poking. Um, there's, what, what's the other one? Uh, pressure. So there's different kinds of sensory neurons that can collect touch information. Um, so sensory neur neurons collect the information, take it up to the spinal cord. That's what's being depicted by this little cross section there on the right-hand side is the spinal cord. And what's really interesting about this particular example, and you, you could show it with, you know, you stepping on something sharp. There's, you know, lots of different times that this would, would illustrate itself. Um, but there are these structures called interneurons that are in the spinal cord. And they're little neurons, they're legitimate neurons that collect the information. They re recognize this is pain that I'm, detecting here and without any conscious awareness that um that little inner neuron can send the message to the motor neuron to move your hand meanwhile that sensory message is still being carried up to the brain so that after a delay you've already pulled your finger out of the candle out and maybe even have it in your mouth trying to cool it off and your brain is like wow what was that did i have my finger over a candle what was that the conscious awareness comes after a delay Imagine if you had to keep holding your finger in the candle or you had to keep standing on the sharp thing and wait for it to get those few more parts of a second up to your brain before you could then send a message down and move. Um, probably a lot more damage would happen. So these interneurons save us from a lot of injury probably. Motor neurons are the neurons that send the message out to your voluntary muscles to move in response to um, stimulation or to walk or any of the other things that you could do voluntarily. So we've got sensory neurons bringing information in. We have interneurons doing those reflexive responses when we need to move quickly. And then motor neurons are um, sending that message out to the body. Okay, so that's the peripheral nervous system. The, I'm sorry, that's the autonomic, that's the somatic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system, the other part of the peripheral nervous system, is the part that controls all of the things in your body that take care of themselves, that you don't have to think about at all. They'll take care of themselves. Now, some of these things you can take control over voluntarily, but you don't need to, like eye blinking, for example. You can decide when to blink. But if you're 
absent-mindedly, you know, just sitting there, you'll blink automatically. So you don't have to do it. You can do it. Other things, no matter how hard you try and get control over it, you can't get control over it. There are parts of the autonomic nervous system, you know, internal organs. That there's nothing you can do. It just takes care of itself. Now, in the autonomic nervous system, there is the sympathetic nervous system and there is the parasympathetic. So the sympathetic nervous system arouses us and the parasympathetic nervous system calms us down. And again, I'm using the word arousing to mean like makes us alert, makes us active, things like that. So let's explore these two a little bit more. All right, so we have this nice guy wearing a spinal cord thong. Very nice. All right. And he's see-through enough that we can see his brain and spinal cord. All right. So autonomic nervous system. Let's start with sympathetic. Here's how I encoded these two when I was a student. I don't know if this will help you. I remembered that the sympathetic nervous system feels sympathy for us when we're scared or we're angry, and it gets us ready for a fight or a flight. So it doesn't want us to be defenseless in, the, in a fight. It doesn't want us to be scared. So it gets us ready for a fight or a flight. So how do we get ready? Well, it does all of these things really quickly and completely automatically. Your pupils dilate, your heart rate accelerates, your stomach stops digesting your last meal, your liver um, releases a bunch of glucose, but you'll have blood sugar um, to fuel your muscles and things. Um, your adrenal gland secretes a bunch of adrenaline so you'll have more endurance and more power. Um, your bladder relaxes because it's always helpful in a fight or flight situation to wet your pants, but okay. Um, and then at the very bottom, we have stimulates ejaculation in the male, and that's hopefully in a not fight or flight situation, but a whole other situation. Um, but so imagine if you're out in the forest taking a walk and you hear some kind of rustling in the bushes that sounds bigger than a squirrel or a rabbit, and you're like, what is in the bushes? The, as soon as you hear it and you think that, oh, thought, this step kicks in and it gets you ready to be able to, if you if you decide to flee and you're in the forest, sure helpful if you've got dilated pupils so you can see better, right? There's no need to be processing the lunch that you just ate right now. Let's stop digesting that and instead secrete a bunch of glucose that we have stored up so you'll have that power. Your heart rate's gonna be pumping a bunch of blood to your muscles and things so you'll be able to run and you got all this adrenaline. It's all It all makes sense, right? So you can fight or you can flee. So you're all set up for that. And let's say that after your initial <gasps> reaction, you realize that it's actually another hiking group's big old friendly black lab dog. And you're like, oh, oh God, I thought your dog was a bear or something. And like, oh, really scared me, man. Uh, that is your parasympathetic nervous system that makes you go, oh, oh, right? All those weird noises that we make. As we're trying to calm down after a fright, that's our parasympathetic nervous system allowing us to return to a rested, uh, rest and digest kind of scenario. So basically its job is to um, return everything back to normal. And so after all that heart rate acceleration, you do have to kind of let some of that air out. You're like, huh, okay, whew, whew, geez, thought your dog was a bear. Right, and you have these weird, like, my voice is higher. Why am I talking like this? Right, all that stuff is your parasympathetic nervous system trying to return everything back to normal. Right, um, once you sort of slow down, your heart rate goes back to normal. You'll start mopping up that extra glucose using your gallbladder. Um, you'll start digesting your food again. You'll stop wetting your pants, um, and then um, whether you're male or female, it doesn't matter. You will um, apparently experience blood flow to the genitals which can happen in actual fear instances, but usually we're talking about other scenarios. The, the important point for those two things that are at the very bottom is just to illustrate that the, the genitals are um, controlled by the autonomic nervous system. Um, so that's why sometimes they do stuff that you weren't really expecting them to do. So, sorry, this is not a human sexuality class, which I also teach, so I'm trying to keep it clean. All right. Um, so that's what the autonomic nervous system does. It prepares us for a fight or flight with the sympathetic nervous system. It calms us down with the parasympathetic nervous system. Um, we are, we're gonna find that um, in our modern everyday life, there are fewer instances of fight or flight 
that are really a bear in the forest or really something that we have to fight with. And more commonly, it's just little arousal of the sympathetic nervous system, little bit of stress, gets our heart rate up a little bit, right? Makes us not completely digest our food so we get acid reflux. It causes us to secrete a little glucose so we get type 2 diabetes, um, right? We get adrenal exhaustion um, because we keep releasing just a little bit of adrenaline. We might have um, urinary problems, right? We might have bladder problems. Um, we might have sexual functioning problems. And those can be symptoms. Any of those can be symptoms of, you know, just a sort of chronic low-grade stress because our systems were not really designed for chronic low-grade stress. They were designed for acute fight or flight, and then you rest and digest, right? So our bodies are, are not really equipped for the kind of little stressors, being in traffic, you know, having to wait in line, being late to things, um, you know, finding out that they're laying off employees at work. Those kinds of things are the, you know, little stressors that can make us have chronic stress as opposed to, you know, a fight or flight. Anyway, all right, well, that takes us through the nervous system. Let's come back in the next segment, and we'll talk about the different areas of the brain. <laughs> 